When we look at the vibratory motion of a mass at the end of a spring and we have a displacement away from its equilibrium and let go and think about how that spring is bobbling up and, or that mass is bobbling up and down at the end of that spring, we can actually look at modeling this motion by the use of uh, amplitude, period, and frequency application with the cosine or the sine function. So with our simple harmonic motion, if we have the maximum displacement occurring at time t equals zero, then you use y equal a cosine two pi ft for your simple harmonic motion model. If you have it at equilibrium at zero and then it starts to go off, then um, you have the motion being modeled by y equal a sine two pi ft where the absolute value of A is your amplitude. So same role that it played when we were looking at graphing the um, trig functions for cosine and sine. <clears throat> F is the frequency. Now notice, F is the frequency, and when we look at the cosine acting on 2 pi ft, or the sine acting on 2 pi ft, that 2 pi ft is my coefficient, and then in front of my angle, T, which is a real numbered value for actually over time. So we want to think about looking at it that way when we go to ap actual applications. And then the reciprocal of the frequency, or one divided by the frequency, is your period. So you can connect this back to what we did when we were looking at these elements with the graphic of the trig functions as well we here are going to get the frequency first and then look at the period as the reciprocal of the frequency. But if you got the period first, you could also reciprocal that number to get you back to the frequency. Because if one number is the reciprocal of another, then it's the reciprocal of the first, the reciprocals of each other. So let's look at some examples of just identifying these components for um, four different examples. So first I have and it's asked me to find the amplitude, the period, and the frequency of each of these simple harmonic motions. The first one is y equals 7 cosine of t over 3. So the amplitude is the absolute value of the number that's multiplied to the trig function. So the absolute value of 7 is 7. Now I want to think of this um, cosine of this angle t over 3 Think of that as, well, I could write t divided by 3 as 1 third times t. So that 1 third coefficient in front of the t has to be all of this coefficient in front of the t from the original model of it. So we can start with this by saying, well, I'm going to have 1 third equal my 2 pi f, what's in front of the t, so now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi to be able to solve for f. And when I do that, when I'm dividing both sides by 2 pi, dividing by 2 pi is like multiplying by 1 over 2 pi, I get that my frequency is 1 over 6 pi. So that's my frequency. And then my period is just the reciprocal of that. So when I reciprocal 1 over 6 pi, I get 6 pi. Now back to that comment I made about if you were okay with finding the period with the, um, or the um, period changes within our trig function graphs that we did previously, remember that if this is thought of as 1 third times t, then my period is the original period of the trig function, 2 pi for cosine, divided by that coefficient of the angle, so that's one-third, and when I take two pi and divide it by one-third, I multiply by three, multiply by the reciprocal, and my period comes out to be the six pi, and then the frequency would be one over six pi. So it just depends on which way you want to look at it. You're going to get the correct answer, whichever one you get first, whether you get the period first, then reciprocal that for frequency, or whether you get the frequency first and reciprocal that for the period. Let's go to the next one. So the next one is y equal negative 4 thirds cosine of 6t. So the number multiplied to the cosine function, I'm going to take the absolute value of negative 4 thirds 
and that gives me a four-thirds amplitude. With simple harmonic motion, that's your maximum displacement. The period, well, if we want to get that first, remember it's 2 pi divided by the coefficient in front of the angle, so divided by 6. When I remove the common factor of 2, I get pi over 3. Now the frequency I could do automatically from that by reciprocaling the period, so that would be 3 over pi. If we wanted to look at it the same way we did the first one, we could say, well, the coefficient in front of the t in my specific example is going to equal the coefficient in front of the t's expression from the overall model. So I have 2 pi f is equal to 6. Solve for f, you'll divide both sides by 2 pi. So f is equal to 6 over 2 pi. And again, my common factors of 2 will remove and I'll get 3 over pi. Okay, let's go on to part 6, or sorry, part C. Okay, so let's go on to part C. My amplitude is the absolute value of 4, which is 4. My period is 2 pi over pi, the original period of sine divided by the coefficient of the angle, so that just gives me 2. So then my frequency is 1 half. Or you could say my 2 pi f has to equal pi Divide both sides by 2 pi to solve for f. f is equal to pi over 2 pi. The common factors of pi's remove, leaving me a 1 in the numerator, a 2 in the denominator, which is my 1 half. And lastly, my amplitude is the absolute value of the number multiplied to the sine function. So that's the absolute value of 2, which is 2. Now think of pi t over 6 as pi over 6 times t, the coefficient times your variable. So I have 2 pi is the original period for sine divided by pi over 6, which is the coefficient in front of the angle t. So I have 2 pi over 1 times 6 over pi. And in this case, the common factors of pi will remove and I just get 2 times 6, which is 12. And then my frequency is just the reciprocal of 12, or 1 12. So there are several different examples of how you find the amplitude, the period, and the frequency when you have the simple harmonic motion.